Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today we're going to be looking at two Olympias from my collection, the SM7 from 1963 and the SM9 from 1971, although they look rather similar, don't they? So these two typewriters are both Olympia brand typewriters. Olympia started about 1903 in Berlin, and by 1933 they actually adopted the name of Olympia. By 1961, over half the typewriters in Germany were Olympia brand typewriters. In the 1960s, they started adding some color to their typewriters, and then by 1992, the Olympia brand actually closed their doors and stopped making typewriters. What makes Olympia special is the engineering. A lot of people will have Smith Coronas in their collections, Royals in their collections. Those are the more common brands of typewriters. I have a ton of them. But Olympia is a little bit more refined, if you will. I recently rewatched California Typewriter, and someone in there actually mentioned that Smith Corona typewriters are like a Chevy. If you take good care of them, they will haul stuff forever and just continue to run. An Olympia typewriter has been likened to a sports car of the typewriter world. So I came to these typewriters through Facebook Marketplace. I bought the SM9 first for about $10 on Facebook Marketplace in pristine condition, which I was very excited about. I call her the magical unicorn of Facebook Marketplace. And then I got this SM7 about six months later on Facebook Marketplace again for about $25, which is still a really good deal for an Olympia typewriter. We don't get many of these where I live in the middle of nowhere in Western Pennsylvania. When you're looking at the Olympia brand, they started making the SM portable typewriters in about 1949, and there are nine variations or SM numbers of SM typewriters in their collection. A lot of people have the SM3s. You might see a lot of SM9s that look different than this one. They might be fully white with the teal knobs on them. This one has the black keys, the white knobs with the charcoal outside. But overall, these are two pretty popular typewriters from the SM line. After the SM line, they started making the SF line, and that is more ultra portable typewriters. So they're a little bit smaller, they fit better in portable locations for traveling. So this is my Olympia SM7 Iris. She's from 1963, and the SM7s came in three color waves. You could get them in pink, you could get them in blue, which is what this is, and you could also get them in white. The SM7s were designed to be a little bit more fashionable with the colors. There are some brighter colored Olympias out there. There's the Sunshine typewriter, which is bright yellow, but the blue on this is supposed to be fashionable. In the 1960s, they added more color to the Olympia typewriters in general. On the SM7s, not a lot of them have the Made in Western Germany label on the back of them. Mine does, which makes it a little bit more special. Around serial number 2 million, they started adding grid textures around the spacebar on the front of the keyboard, which is what mine has. And about 2,080,000, they started adding um, an angle to the platen knob, so it looked a little bit different. Mine is from 1963, so it is after those changes have been implemented, so I do have that grid texture around the spacebar, and my platen knob angles are just a little bit different. Now this is Artemis, my SM9, and she's from 1971. In 1968, they changed the SM9 design from that classic white with white keys and turquoise insect keys to a fully black keyboard. So this SM9 has that black keyboard. And then from 1977 to 79, they actually changed the platinum knob colors from this white color to a full black color. The SM9s, once you get to the end of the 70s, are considered a little less nice than some of the earlier SM models in the SM line. This one, however, is from 1971, so it does have the black keys, but it still retains the white platen knobs. Now, both of these typewriters have an inset on their front key area that says Deluxe, indicating that they are the Deluxe version of the SM7 and the SM9. However, I scoured the internet and couldn't find any design differences between the deluxe model and the original model of the SM7 and the SM9. I also asked the Typosphere, and they didn't seem to know if there were any differences either. Most of them thought it was a marketing tactic to make you buy the updated version of the SM9 because it was deluxe. Now, what I really like about these two typewriters are the design elements. They both type pretty smoothly. This SM9, I mean, is just a workhorse. She was in pristine condition when I got her, so the type is very smooth. I've never had to do anything to her. She's perfect the way she is. And the SM7 just needs a little bit of cleaning, but otherwise is a very solid machine. 
What I really like is that the front colored covers do come off of the typewriter, but they do so in an interesting way. You'll have buttons on Royal typewriters, especially the portable ones, that'll pop up that top cover so you can get into the type slugs, whether you need to clean them or change your ribbon. But on these two typewriters, you actually lift off this whole front case area. So on the SM7, you can lift off this entire blue part by just pulling it up and it does link on to some little lever things on the back underneath the ribbon spools. And on the SM9, which I really like, it's hinged on there. So you can hinge up this white cover and then hinge it back down. So you never have to actually remove this cover to get in there. That is a design element that's different between these two models. The cover is still attached on this SM9, as opposed to you have to take it all the way off on the SM7. Another element that is different between the two of these is the addition of the Olympia logo on the front of the SM9. On the SM7s and a lot of the models previous to this redesign of the SM9 have the cursive script font Olympia logoing on the front of them. They have the full name, but once you get into these white models of the SM9s, you start to get this orange or red little eye logo for the Olympia on the front, and it makes the whole design like look a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother. You don't have that cursive font on the front, but you do have it on the back of the carriage. I love the side view of these two typewriters. There's something about them that I just really like the clean line and that angled line going down between the gray casing and the colored top casing. It reminds me a lot of the Royal Futura, which is my favorite design of a typewriter to look at. I also really like that the rabbit ear or the paper holder that comes up in the back is released by a lever. So you can do that on the side by just hitting this lever button and they both pop up. The difference between these two, and maybe this is just mine, but on the SM9, you can snap that right back into place by just snapping it in. On the SM7, I have to hit that button again to release it, and then I can snap it into place. But it won't go down if I'm not hitting that button. I can't snap it in unless I'm hitting that button to set it back in there. If I can do it on camera, under pressure. Size-wise, there's also some differences between these two typewriters. The SM7 is just slightly smaller with a normal size carriage. I find that the SM9 has a larger carriage than the SM7 compared to the typewriter. Even just looking at it visually, if you center it, it looks like this sticks out further than it does on the SM7. Could be just my brain and my eyes being lopsided or something. But I do think that the SM7 is slightly smaller and slightly more portable, especially when you take into consideration the cases that come with these machines. Around 1977 and 79, they changed the case design of the SM9s, but this SM9 from 1971 comes with this massive suitcase size black pleather case. It is a really beautiful case. It holds the typewriter well, but it's massive. The SM7 comes with a little bit more of a normal portable typewriter case. You wouldn't confuse this for a suitcase if you were in an antique store. Um, and it also comes with like the normal key front and it's got this textured fiberglass outside to it. I live in a tiny apartment, so when I'm trying to store typewriters, I can definitely slip both of them under my bed in these cases, but the SM7 takes up so much less space than the SM9 if you're looking for a more portable or smaller size typewriter. Between the two of them, I've had great typing experiences on both. I like the design of both. I'm really attracted to the color specifically on the Olympia SM7 and kind of the more old school logo design on the front of it, but I love the typing experience of the SM9. And that could just be from cleaning and adjustment that I need to do a little bit of work on my SM7. Both typewriters are in great condition currently as is, and both have a really smooth typing experience. You can adjust the level of tension on the sides as well as the ribbon color and I think that's a great addition to have on the outside of the typewriter. In some of your more royal portable typewriters from the 1950s, you actually have to change the touch control on the inside of the cover. So you'd have to lift up the cover, change the tension level or the level of hardness you want while typing 
on the inside, which I prefer to have it on the outside on this little lever on the side. Just makes it really easy to switch between modes. So I love both of these typewriters in my collection, and both of them are named after Greek goddess-like figures. This SM9 is named Artemis after the goddess of the hunt and nature. And then I named this typewriter Iris, who was a Greek messenger, and she actually used rainbows to communicate to the gods up on Olympus, which I thought was kind of interesting. The combination of rainbows and her being a cool color with the addition of colors in 1960 on the Olympia SM7s. If you're interested in more typewriter content, definitely check out some of the other videos on this channel. I have a type test between these two typewriters and an electric you guys can watch. And I also have some more just general information about typewriters. If you're interested in more about Olympia typewriters, there's a great video by my friend Lychee Pink Planner here on YouTube. I've linked that down in the description. You can learn a little bit about her typewriter, Joan, who's also an Olympia typewriter. I want to thank you so much for watching today and remind you, you're just my type, writer.